Hey, what's up, developers? This is Sheldon. Welcome back to iOS E Tutorials by Sheldon. Today, we're going to talk about something related to the image downscaling. I think this is a very useful tutorial that you're going to use this pretty often because in a lot of cases, you might be downloading your some image from your backend. This image is going to be used in multiple places. And actually, this image might be too large for thumbnail. There's basically no use to keep the quality of the image and take so much of your memory of your apps. I happen to run into a blog that talks about using different ways to make the width and height smaller. Uh, this blog actually talks about using UI kit, port graphics, image IO, port image, or using vector images to downscale. So basically, this blog talks about five ways of downscaling images, which is quite impressive to me because for my personal experience, even though I have been working in iOS for five years, I only use like two or three of them. So first of all, this blog is written by a Chinese author. I don't think he has an English name, but he do have a GitHub page. So feel free to go check this out under his GitHub repository page and feel free to give him some stars there. But the thing is, I'm going to fork this repository from him and then make some changes. So uh, at least translate those language from Chinese to English to make you guys understand what's going on here. So basically, the first way of downscaling images he mentioned here is to using UI kit. I think this is the most common way to first generate image from anywhere from your screen and then draw it into a UI image. As you guys can see the code here, we are actually rendering from our screen. If you have a iOS device that, for example, from here to here, and then you can just draw this square portion of your UI screen to make it into an image. The first way is not directly transfer from an image to another image, but rather draw something. So first, you basically begin image context with option, and then you can set the alpha, scale, whatever. This scale is the one that you want to change if you want a downscaling image, and then you just return whatever you draw there. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, and I think this one is pretty commonly used. And the second one he mentioned in the blog is using core graphics. Core graphics is actually a lower API under Quas Core 2D. The thing is, we're going to write this as an extension function under UI image. So once you import my code, you can actually use this simple use this function to uh, downscale the image anyways. But the thing is, to draw the context, you're going to use uh, width, height, bits per component, bytes per row, space, and bitmap info. Uh, so basically, you're needing a lot of stuff that most of them are just from CG image. I mean, a CG image is just a UI image property. So basically, you can get the CG image from UI image dot CG image as in this line. To draw the context for sure, you're going to need those stuff. And after that, you can use this as a context. You can choose your quality and then you, you can draw your context into a UI image. Yeah, I will say the hardest part is just this, but actually all the properties you needed is just simply from CG image. It's also not too bad. So in this blog, this, this author also posts some comparison. Uh, as you guys can see, the bottom right corner is, is kind of blinking CG image. So when our CG image shown, that's the image of the transfer image. You can see the screen gets a little bit blurred. It's just a little bit, but I think the performance is pretty good. And maybe user cannot even notice that. It's just not that sharp anymore. When you consider and create a thumbnail, I think this is the best solution because usually thumbnail is much smaller than original image. And that's pretty good enough. So the next is actually using image IO. This is the best one. And this is also the one that mentioned in this year's WWDC 18 under iOS memory deep dive video. Let's see the code. So basically, when you use image IO, it's created from core graphics, but wrapped it up a little bit. And the API is also not that straightforward. But the thing is, we're going to first create a data. This data is kind of a UI image PNG representation of the UI image. So first, you're going to create the data. And then the most important part is that you're going to create 
the pixel size. Once you get the pixel size, next up you can create CG image source to create out of the data. And next we can set the options. If you want to see all the options, I recommend you to check the official document. Here is using the max pixel size and also key CG image source create thumbnail. So basically we are focused to create a thumbnail in this case. And of course, after that, we can create image out of the data. Again, the syntax is not that intuitive, but according to the later performance table, as well as the tutorial given by Apple this year, I do think that's the best candidate so far. And by the way, I have written a notes about that video tutorial. So because the video is like 15 minutes long, if you don't want to spend all the 15 minutes there, you can read my notes. I think my notes cover anything related to the basics of memory management, as well as uh, some topics of uh, handling images, including the part of taking screenshots or downscaling images. The fourth option this author given is called core image. Core image is pretty high level API. In this case, I think it's a little bit abused. The code here is using its capability of applying filters, you know, the filters to change the theme of an image and basically the filters that you can put within Instagram. At the same time you apply the filter, you can also scale the image. So I think we are kind of abusing the function of resizing image with core image. But I mean, at the end of the day, it will do the job. And of course, we don't expect this guy to perform too well and the result will be shown in the, in the performance chart later. So this guy is just applying very basic CI lens of Lenzo scale transform, I guess. Forgive my pronunciation if I'm wrong. But the thing is, we're just using this very basic transform filter. At the end of the day, the lights get brighter, but at least the picture is downscaled. But I don't think this is the one that you really want because we kind of change the image after applying some filters. Yeah, so the takeaway is you maybe want to try other transform or filter to see if other works as well. But, uh, and the last but not the least is called V image is actually a vector image. So the author mentioned we have to import accelerate framework. We have to create a CG image first and to use CG image, we first need to get the format of the image. There are some options by setting a lot of weird stuff that one of them is base per component, base per pixel, color space, bitmap info, a lot of stuff that you might not be using on a daily basis. We also gonna use a source buffer. Next line is kind of confusing. It's called defer free this buffer data. Basically this line means at the end of the function, uh, after you return something or before return something, it's gonna call this. So defer is just a means after this function getting called, we can also call this one. This is to release the resources we're gonna use inside of the source buffer anyways. And also we need to create an error and then after we grab all the info just like the other one with height bytes per pixel, bytes per row, and then we're getting some data. And of course here this guy also used defer again to kinda uh, release the data in that data and then we use some buffer to, to kind of create the image. I mean, the code is so confusing. I guess you guys can directly use it. I assure this will work. Again, because this is low C-level API, the interface is not that friendly, I would say, but definitely the lower API always has a better performance if you want to dig in because lower API always can set really precise data, like how do you manage your memory? How do you handle these options? because always the higher API is using some default value, most likely is not the best case. So I do believe this guy has a better performance. Anyways, as author mentioned, the vector image framework is really not popular. I think it's pretty cool if you first introduce these few lines of code in your code base as a developer. I think this, it doesn't have to show you have a deeper knowledge, but at least it will show you have a vision, better code or better practice regarding a lot of different scenarios. Of course, we're gonna have some comparison across all the five ways that we deal the images downscaling. So first, we used a really big 20 megabytes JPEG image and record the time performance. And it looks like UI kit is, is not good. Core graphic is fine. 
image I/O is pretty good and core image is really bad because, as I mentioned, we are actually applying some filter uh, with core image. So I don't think it's even fair because we are doing a lot of things actual rather than simply downscaling. And uh, I don't think it works with we image as a JPEG according to this chart. But the author didn't mention if that's the reason that there is no time for a vector image. But I do believe uh, this might not be working with JPEG file. And then later, author also mentioned using one megabytes PNG file. So that's why it takes much shorter time than this guy, because the file size itself is much smaller. But the performance that it gives us is still the core graphics and image IO has a better performance overall. And the UI kit is not bad. And core image is not that bad this time as well. And then vector image is a little bit better than core image. So this is author and uh, because it's in Chinese and he doesn't have an English name, but I do want to give a big shout out to him for writing such a good summary. But anyways, he also mentioned that when you use UI kit to deal the images, there might be a high chance to get out of memory warning because when you use UI image draw in rack, it first will create a bitmap and this is really memory consuming. And I couldn't agree more on his point there because as I mentioned in this video about iOS memory, a deep dive of this year's WWDC 18, it also mentioned that drawing image takes so large memory as I have written in my post here under GIST. So if you have an image of size of half a megabyte after the code, it can take like 20 times more in the memory. Although the file size is just like half of megabytes, but after decode, it takes much larger space in your memory. Feel free to read my GIFs and uh, give me some feedback in the video if you want. But the thing is, if we can avoid creating the bitmap, of course, it will use less memory. I think that will wrap up our video today. I think this blog gives you some bigger picture of downscaling images. I think it's good that you know there are five, at least five different frameworks from iOS itself that you can use to downscaling images, but uh, I don't think you need to remember them all. And keep in mind that although the UI kit one is not the best all the time, but the point of the UI kit one is more like taking screenshots than simply downscaling. But if you want to focus on downscaling images, I really recommend you to use the core graphic one as well as the image IO solution. So again, I will fork the repo from the author and also make some translation uh, to make the whole file readable for everybody in English. I hope this video find you some useful information and I will post all the relative links down in the video description and feel free to leave like, leave any comments and also subscribe and also follow me on GitHub to support my work. And I hope to see you soon in my next tutorial. Bye.